as a believer, God always wants us ever increasing. And so, um, and so in the midst of all of that, I, you've heard me talk about it the last three, three months, beginning of the year. He said, get back to teaching on, well, not, not just teaching, but studying and teaching on uh, on faith and what faith can do and so that's how we we've evolved to these I've been talking on Wednesday night you might want to come out on Wednesday night we're talking about uh, barrier breaking faith and um, I, I, am, I am a serious serious student of faith my life is what it is today because of what I know about faith I, it, it is I mean it, it is I, I, I live sleep breathe faith I just it's changed, transformed my life. It's the way we live. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. All of your dreams, listen to me, every dream you have, every dream you have, if it's okay with God, can come to pass by faith. Every deficit in your life, everything that sets you back, you can be restored and move forward if you understand how faith works. Everybody who walked out of you, disappointed you, everyone who just you know just just was just not good you can overcome that by faith I was telling people yesterday I, had, I got a call this week from somebody who did something to me 15 years ago how many years 15, 15 years ago and and I forgave him I let it go a long time ago by faith I let it go did you like it no did you want to cut him no I wanted to shoot him <laughs> but I'm saved now <laughs> But 15 years ago, and, and I hadn't heard from him, I ain't talked to him. And uh, they called me the other day, and they said, you know what, I need to let you know something. Would you forgive me? I was wrong. Now, and I told him, I was like, man, oh, shoot, I don't got my, but here's the thing. Here's what I thought about. I mean, I, that was wonderful, but I was so far, I, I felt so good, I was so far past that. That I'm like, why are you even wasting your time? But he needed to do that. And it was a lesson for me, I don't want, to be holding anything no 15 years against somebody I don't want to hold anything 15 minutes and I don't because I learned that that shut down what God can do in my life it doesn't hurt him whoever I'm mad at it affects me so if you're here this morning I ain't gonna charge you for this get over it and let it go I know that don't sound churchy but uh, get over it and let it go all right, you're in Mark chapter 11? Yes, All right, let's read. Um, let's start reading with verse 12. <laughs> now, I told the first group this too. I'm going to tell you this. I want you, and I'm going to read for me the scripture today, and please don't, 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 um, don't, don't tune me out and don't tune out the word because the Holy Spirit is going to say something fresh on this familiar scripture. Yes, sir. And, and don't, don't be guilty of saying, I already know that. Okay, and that's the way we approach it because I mean just in between the service I saw something else I thought I knew Okay, now the next day when they had come down from Bethany He was hungry he being Jesus and seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves He went to see if perhaps he would find something on it and when he came to it He found nothing but leaves for it was not the season for figs and in response to it in response Excuse me. Jesus said to it it what? Jesus spoke to the tree. Jesus, the one who we're entrusting our eternal destiny to, talks to trees. And he said, let no one eat. Hold the conversation. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples didn't overhear it. They heard it. Because Jesus made it plain and he said it. And he didn't care what they thought. Because faith is not embarrassed. Faith is not bashful. And faith is not timid. Now, look at on in verse um, 20. Now in the morning as they passed by they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. This was the next day. And Peter remembering said to him Jesus! Jesus look at there! That fig tree you were talking to a minute yesterday. No he said the fig tree you curse has withered away. Now just a little something. Why didn't Jesus like whoa, whoa look at that tree man look at there! Jesus probably would have went on about his business, not even thought about the tree. You know why? Because he understood. I spoke it, it's working. I don't need a confirmation. The confirmation came out of my mouth. More on that later. 
at a later time. But um, but then but Peter said, "Remember the tree, Rabbi. I looked at the tree which you cursed; it's withered away." And Jesus answered and said to him, "What did he say, everybody? Have faith." In God. Have faith in God and that's what we're talking about today have faith in God now he didn't say he didn't say just have faith he told him where to put the faith that's right. see there are many people that would advise you oh man have faith oh have faith have faith in what have faith in who Jesus was specific because he understood if I can get you Peter who was a union man, who was a businessman, union man, fisherman, who understood how to make things happen. But he tried to, he said, I know you have a lot of ability and that kind of thing, so I got to talk to you this way. You're used to making things happen. I need you to make sure you don't misplace your faith. Put your faith in God, Peter. Now, that's significant even in our time because a lot of things, we live in a time, and I, um, I put the scripture up here last week, I'm going to put them up there again, that um, um, we have... Our, the church world, by and large, has been invaded with intellectualism and philosophies. The church world, by and large, has been invaded with the traditions of men. Men say this, you know, in church. I'm talking about church. Now, I'm not talking about the world. I'm talking about in church. Will you put uh, Colossians 2.8 up on the screen for me, please? Colossians 2.8. Listen to this one. It said, beware lest anyone cheat you. How many of y'all like to be cheated? Okay, so he said, beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ. So that's one translation. I'm going to give you another one in a minute. But see, man's, oh, this is, man's philosophy can cheat you. Now, I, I'm all for education. I got a little bit. I'm all for, I remember when I was going to school, some of that stuff, I'm like, I don't believe none of this stuff, but this is the answer they want. <laughs> and you have to judge some of it, a lot of it, actually. But, but see, man's philosophy will cheat you. Man's tradition can cheat you. Cheat me out of what, Pastor? Cheat me out of what? See, there's some things that God put in his word that's available to us that man philosophy will say, well, that passed away or that's not necessary now. All of that stuff doesn't work now. Well, that's not quite true. There's some things. Listen, the Bible said, let God be true and every man be a liar. Put the other uh, Colossians up there. I like this one. He said, and you have therefore received, no, 2-8, there you go. See to it that no one carries you off as spoil or make you yourself captive by his so-called philosophy and intellectualism and vain deceit, idle fancies, plain nonsense. <laughs> Following human tradition, men's ideas, watch this, of the material rather than the spiritual. How many of y'all know there's a spiritual world? Yeah. Now they're not going to teach you this down at APU, AUU, or UUA. They're not going to teach you about a spiritual world. I'm going to tell you something in a minute. And just crude notions following the rudiments and elemental, elemental teaching of the universe <laughs> and disregarding the teachings and disregarding the teaching and disregarding the teachings of of Christ and disregarding the teachings of Christ and disregarding the teaching of Christ now this is powerful you know what Jesus was doing when he was telling them have faith in God he was teaching them that your words can go to the root of a problem cut it out and bring you your victory See, he said here a minute ago, he said, he said, just, just, just philosophy just talks about the material world. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is saying, there's a spiritual world that philosophy and men tradition won't talk to you about. Come on, God. See, your word, whether they're, whether they're praising like we would do earlier or speaking to something, their word, this, this is a word planet. Yes, and faith is voice activated in this planet. Yeah. That's why you can't even get saved until you say something. You can believe all you want. You can believe and believe and believe. But until you confess out of your mouth, salvation is going to stay away from you. Right. 
And so he said, they don't teach you that you won't learn that in, 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 in some, you won't learn in some Bible college. But he said, see, man's philosophy will cheat you out of victory that you can walk in. Yes. That woman that had the issue of blood, she went to all those doctors, didn't she? Yep. Didn't she? Yep. And she went, she spent all she had, didn't she? Yep. Didn't she? Yep. <laughs> and then, then she got to Jesus and somebody told her about Jesus. Hey. Somebody told her about Jesus and she started saying, if I can touch your clothes, I'll be whole. If I can touch your clothes, I'll be whole. Now, what sense does that make? Well, she's making sense in the spiritual world. She's releasing faith now. And that faith got so strong, that faith got so strong that what she paid didn't matter. The doctor she saw didn't matter. But that faith did what the doctors and the money couldn't do. It trumped that spiritual world, that material world. And we'll be cheated. If somebody don't teach me spiritual principles, if somebody doesn't teach me how the power word, how I'm cursed, the Bible says, out of your mouth come blessing and what? Curse. I can curse myself. I don't need somebody. I can curse myself. And if nobody teaches me this, if I, I, I'm cheated, if no one teaches me, friendly, you are the architect and the prophet of your own life. What are you saying over your life? And so the church has been invaded with, well, you know, what's reasonable, what's logical. There's nothing re reasonable or logical about me speaking to something. But Jesus spoke to him. And so he turned to them and said, listen, listen. <laughs> he said, he turned to him and said, whatever thing you, you know what? Put, 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 put uh, 11, Mark 11, 24 up there, please. Let me, let me, let me, let me drop this on you right quick. I'm going to just drop it on you. And, and so, so this, this is going to be a link for somebody. Mark 11, 24. And, uh, okay, that's fine. I can, I can work with that. Okay, okay, back up to 23. Because this was the teaching in the context of him saying, have faith. Now he started teaching. Back up to 23, please. That would be left. There you go. Now see, he, he teaching. Watch his teaching. And I'm, I'm all off. It's okay. Truly, I tell you, whoever shall, whoever says to this mountain, not says about the mountain. He said, mountain be lifted up, thrown into the sea. You know why into the sea? Because it won't be seen again. He didn't say just move over here to the, to the other side. And does not, watch it, and does not doubt in his heart at all, in his heart, but believe, watch this, but believes that what he says will take place. So I got to believe what I say is going to take place. Then he said, then if he believes what he says is going to take place, it will be done for him. But that's not what I want to talk to you about. Next verse. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe, trust, and be confident that it is granted to you and you will get it. Okay, now. Most people miss this. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer. I don't like that. Give me a New King James, that same verse. I think. New King James, that same verse. Therefore, I say to you, whatever you ask when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. When are you going to have what you pray for? I haven't, asked, I, haven't, I haven't given this test in a long time. I'm going to just give you a little, this is the short, condensed, uh, abbreviated version of how to get answered prayer. Because most folks miss it right here. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to slow down. This is not, see, some of y'all, somebody pulling this thing. Somebody's like, I need me a prayer answer. You about to get it, baby. You about to get it, home slice. <laughs> I used to say back in the day, what's up, home slice? Okay. Therefore, I don't know where that came. I had said that in years. Therefore, I say to you, whatever thing you ask for when you pray, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you'll have them. When are you going to have them? When are you going to receive them? And leave it up there. Here's the key. Here's the key. He said, whatever thing you ask when you pray, the moment you pray, believe you receive it when? 
when you pray. Not tomorrow. Not after you go get your pop tart. The moment you pray, you got to believe you got it then. See, a lot of people don't know that. And so they never, they never get to the shall have part. See, the moment you pray, he didn't say, he didn't say you got it. He said, believe you got it. When? When? Right now. Then you shall have it. You got to believe you got it now, not tomorrow. When I pray, listen, when I, when I pray, when I pray that offering, I believe I got it now. I believe I got it. I don't got it. I believe I got it. See, it's already done in the, in the other realm where they told what I read that scripture we talk about. Don't think about the spirit. They don't teach us about the spiritual world. I'm teaching about it. You got it. You got it. There's a whole nother realm that we live in. And so I got to believe I got it when I pray. Not tomorrow. Not when I fast next week. Now. And see, when you believe you got it now, you praise like you got it. You understand. See, you understand. See, that's why, that's why when you start praising God, I'm praising God. I got this thing. Go hold it, go. I got this thing. This is mine. Now. Not tomorrow. So Jesus, we're teaching them. See, that's what he's talking about. That's what he talking about. See, the people intellectualism has come into the church and it robbed us of the teachings of Christ. It's a man to tell you, well, just hold on. God's going to change your hand. Where is it? I will hold on to it if I can find the thing. That sounds good. God don't come when you want to, but he's always on time. I can't find Jesus saying that. Jesus said, believe you got it and you get it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna, in the in the days to come, especially on Sundays. Uh, well, Wednesday too. It's just it, they're all coming together. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about how to build strong faith. Now I know some of y'all may get up and walk out when I get ready to say this. Some of y'all may leave. I love you. If I don't ever see you again, it was nice. It was, <laughs> it was good. I can't remember the last time I didn't get a prayer answer. I'm about personal. I ain't talking about, you know, somebody else involved. I'm talking about me. Because I know how to pray. I, don't, I listen to men, but I, I, I judge what they say on the teachings, based, uh, up against the teachings of Christ. And then me and sister girl, we came in, we, we come together, and, uh, and, and we, have a, we, have, we have a little contracts. Between the two of us and God, I got, I got, I got them right here. I keep them with me. I read the fine French, and then I tell the devil when he says it's not gonna happen. I say it's written right there. It's written in my iPad and on my phone. Cause we believe, and then we dated. Right, we got one in here, but the top one we got, we, we prayed it uh, uh, February twenty seventh, nine thirty p.m. That's when we received it. Yes, see, I'm way out here, y'all. I'm not following anyone. But see, that's when we received it. Y'all got it yet? Yes. No, we don't have it yet. We believe we got it. Yes. We received it on the 20, 20, uh, February 27th and 9.30. We believe we received it then. Yes. So every time I sit there and, and one of them good old praise songs, one of them good old devil Busting the devil head song, come on. I think about when we received that thing. Thank you. Oh, yes, that's good. Oh. And it's funny because after it manifests, it's like it's kind of anticlimactic. Because you didn't praise yourself. <laughs> you didn't praise yourself dry. <laughs> but I got something, I got something documented. Okay, I received that. I got some stuff. I got all look on my board. I, I received August first, uh, two thousand and uh, two thousand and six. That's when I believed I received it. And I just look at it and say, Father, thank you. Oh, that's so good. That's so good to have that thing. Oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Spirit world. 
Am I helping you? Yeah. That's how this thing works, man. You're not going to learn this in school. That's why you got to come to the lighthouse. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's worthy to be praised. All right. Yeah. That's how it works. What's your dream? What's your goal? What's your desire? What God tell you? And you don't even have to, you don't even have to dream up anything. You can just go on all the promises right there. How it works. Now you can either play church. <laughs> really, you can either play church or you can or you can manifest the power of God. You can get stuff by your work, or you can get stuff by supernatural production. Yes, sir. I don't play church. I can't stand playing church. Anyway, can I get back to my lesson? All right. Thank you for your permission. Okay. Now, I want to, um, okay. So, I want to, if he tell me put faith in God, I need to know what this faith looks like. Um, Hebrews chapter 11, please. So he said, put faith in God. Because we can put it in a lot of places. We can put it in our retirement. We can put it in our job, our previous accomplishments, medicine, rehab, all of that, counseling. We can put it, yeah, the school I attended, the school I'm going to attend. We can put faith in all that. I'm going to put my faith in God and all that other stuff will work just fine. All right. Thank you so much, you guys. Thank you. Somebody, whoever pulled that, I really appreciate you pulling that out. Have faith in God. You, you can do it. Okay. Let me, let me do this illustration first. How many of y'all have uh, never flown on an airplane? Raise your hand. You've never flown on an airplane. Okay. How about down there? Okay. All right. How many of you have flown on an airplane? Okay. How many of y'all are not going to participate in my survey? <laughs> see y'all, y'all, you see what y'all do? I, I, know, I know how it is. So I told them first survey, I was like that at church. I'm like, look. Don't be asking me no question. I didn't come to participate in no, no questionnaire. <laughs> and, you know, I wasn't used to this. One time we went to this church where the pastor had you talking to everybody. Turn to your neighbor, say this. Turn to your neighbor, say this. I said, look, I didn't come here to talk to my neighbor. I don't even know my neighbor. So don't be asking me to do that. I used to think like that. That's bad, huh? Y'all be thinking like that? Okay. Because I was shy. Okay, I'm going to get this illustration. And, and this is simple, but this is good because, see, see, people try to make faith so hard. It's so hard. It ain't hard. Okay, see, you flew on that airplane. Chances are, now you may have, but chances are you did not go into the cockpit and talk to the pilot. Unless you're about five years old, they let you go in there. But, but if you went in there, you did not, you did not say, hey, can I see uh, all your, your current ratings, make sure you're current? I need to, I need to make sure you're, you're still certified before we take off. I need to make sure that, that you know, you, you, you're up to par to fly this thing, okay? You didn't check him out. You didn't put a breathalyzer. Have you been drinking? You didn't, you didn't do that, but yet you, 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 you trusted him to get you from point A to point B on the aircraft. You didn't ask any questions at all. None. You put all your little stuff down there in the cargo hold and in the overhead bin. You strapped yourself in there. You turned off all your mobile devices. And you sat back and you did everything he told you to do. You know the mobile devices don't mess with them radars. They don't mess with them. But you still did it. 
I don't be turning mine off sometimes. I mean, but then one time I said, I ain't turning it off. And the girl said, okay, that disobedience right there going to cost you. I said, I ain't trying to die. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, did, I used to do that. like Because I talked to your pilot once. He said, that stuff don't bother. I'm like, it don't. He said, no. And so, so I would act like I turned mine off and I wouldn't turn it off. <laughs> and I'm like, see, that's disobedience. That's your problem. Anyway. But and then they give you then you then you get a you, you they tell you you're going to Seattle. And how many of you know once you get up in the air, you don't know if you're going north, south. Sometimes you look outside, you don't know you don't look like you're moving. But all you got is some paper saying you're going to Seattle. And you've even you've even text somebody and say, Hey, pick me up in a couple hours. Now they gotta rearrange their schedule to catch you. You don't even know where you're going. But you took somebody's, you took a man's word for it. So that's faith. That's faith. Why can't you do God like that? Why can't you take God at his word? And that's all God is saying. Can you, can you, can you believe me? We were in New York one time, and uh, um, in Power State Building, I always wanted to go there. I had statues of it, I mean, little, little figurines of it, I always wanted to go. We got on that joker, and I, you know, it's a hundred, they told me it was a hundred and two floors. I know, it's, I, take, I know it takes a long time to get up there. And so we traveling up there, and I got to thinking, man, what if this thing break? Because we were down at Alyeska when it first opened on that tram, that, and that thing, that thing broke right in the middle of going up there. And we hanging. And I was praying in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't know what them tourist folks, foreigners were saying. They probably thought I was trying to speak their language. <laughs> but, but before I got on the elevator, I didn't, check, I didn't check to see if that elevator had been serviced. I didn't check to see if the maintenance had been updated or, or even the technician, if he was still rated. I don't know those people, but I got on that elevator. That's faith. Jesus said, put your faith in God. I put my faith in that pilot that I don't know. I put my faith in some, some dude, <laughs> some dude, some dude probably making minimum wage. I don't know. Probably out smoking crack the night before. That's so true, God. I don't know. And here's a God. Who, who, who hung the stars, the moon, and, and, and the earth, sun, er, er, orbiting all around, never came back in for calibration. Because it got off. And he tells me, I'll supply your every need. And I had problems wondering if he told the truth. And so Jesus said, don't you put your faith in man. Put your faith, have faith in God. Now, let's look at it real quick because y'all got me way off schedule. Hebrews chapter 11, I'm going to ask you to put it up on the board to amplify it because there's so much in here. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm loving this, man. I'm glad I came to church today, boy. Yeah. Now, if I'm going to have this faith, I need to know what it is. Now, faith is, look at the screen if you don't have amplified. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of things we hope for, being the proof. Being the what? Proof. Being the proof. We do not see. Wait a minute. How's something going to be the proof of something I don't see? Let me read it again. Now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for being the proof of things we do not see. And the conviction of their reality. So there is a reality, even though I don't see it. Yeah. Faith perceiving as real fact. Oh, there is a fact. Which is not revealed to what I see, fear, heal, touch, smell, to the senses. So faith is a, <laughs> I use this illustration, faith is like a confirmation. How many of y'all ever order something, you get a confirmation number? You ever order something online and before you even done out of that uh, website, you, you, get a, you get a ding on your mail saying confirmation for XYZ company. Well, faith is your confirmation slip. Because XYZ, you don't have the item you ordered. That, you just have a confirmation 
that is ordered. That you're getting it. That it's going to appear in your life. It's not it, but it's the confirmation of it. What is? My faith is. And then it goes and say, and it's the proof of things that I don't see. I don't see the item, but my confirmation is the proof that the item is mine. Yeah. Right? And it says, it says it's, it's being the proof of things we do not see and the conviction. So I, am, I got a conviction that my stuff is mine. I don't have it yet, but it's going to show up. I would tell them this morning how we were in, we were in Los Angeles one time, and uh, there was a conference, and uh, we were in this hotel, the Sheraton Hotel, and uh, an ESPN just came, they had a tournament down there or something, and they had took over the hotel. Well, I was already in the hotel. I was already in my room. And so they came, we, we had, had a meeting that day, we came back, and I'm talking fast because I'm out of the city. Um, and so we came back, and there was a note on my door, uh, Mr. Friendly, we need, you, we need your room. I said, what do you need my room for? I'm here all week. Uh, we need your room. Well, ESPN is here, and they want the whole floor. I said, well, they're going to have the whole floor minus one. Because, <laughs> Dr. Dale, we're here for a week. We got a whole lot. We did some money. It takes us half a day to unpack. Because <laughs> that girl be taking some clothes. I'm like, I said, I ain't trying to tell her to move. I remember telling them that. I said, I ain't, try, I ain't trying to tell her to move. She didn't know i And so anyway. And so, so they said, so they said, when well, ESPN got, I said, I don't care what end got it, this end in here. Anyway, so, that wasn't right. See, that's what I get for talking fast. I was trying to hurry up and get through this so I can get to, but anyway, here's the, okay, come on back. So I told him, I said, uh, I said, listen, I got a confirmation number. This is my room. Now he said, <laughs> I'm gonna get in trouble. So he said, he said, he said, when you had a confirmation, there's a conviction. See, so you ever walk up to the counter when you know you you supposed to be there, and you got a confirmation code. You walk up to the counter. What? <laughs> well, we saw your room's not ready. No, my my room, my room ready. That's my confirmation code right there. Because, see, when you got a confirmation code, you bold. See, faith is the confirmation. This is how bold you got to be with the promises of God. Devil, I got a confirmation code right here. 1 Peter 2.24. Jesus. And so, anyway, so they came, we came back tonight, and I said, I'm not moving. They said, no, you got to move. I said, I'm not moving. I said, I said, let me talk to the general, but I can't talk to him till later on. I got to go do something. Tell him, wait for me tonight when I get back. So I come in there, this dude sitting up there, I can tell he was a general, you know, he's sitting there waiting on me. He said, oh, Mr. Friendly, I, uh, Mr. I said, what? I said, I ain't moving. He said, what was it going to take to get you to move? Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> they ended up giving us the presidential suite. <laughs> the presidential suite. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm cutting it short. Because cause it, was, it was, I actually did not the first time. They gave us a presidential suite, and, and I said, this is what I told him. He thought that was going to be fine. I said, ain't. I want the whole week free. Uh, and all them room service meals y'all charged, overcharging me for. $15 for two more days. You got to be kidding me. <laughs> you know them folks ripping up. So I got the, we got the presidential tweet the whole week. The whole thing paid for. Watch this. But it was because I had a confirmation code. Now see, I would walk down there. See, when you got a confirmation code, you bold. And you just walked up to the counter, hey, sweetie, you, you trying to give me a move. I got a confirmation code. Well, I'm sorry, we don't have a room for you. Oh, yes, yes you do. You have a room for me. Well, we just don't have a room. Yes, you do, because I got a confirmation code. That's right. That's right. Now, see, listen, there's a room. This is a big old hotel right here. This is a big hotel. Mm. Now, I know you don't normally book out that presidential, but um, this is a big hotel. You got a room for me, because I got a confirmation code. It may not be the room I pay for, but it's, I got a room. And it's better than the one I pay for, probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mr. Friend, we don't have... See, this is where you got to be with the devil. I'm just illustrating. Yeah. Right. And so you stand there. You stand at the counter. Say, listen, honey. 
I don't know what you got to do. I don't know if you have to put somebody out. But I got a room in here. I don't know if you're going to have to go build one real quick. Before check-in time. But I got a room in this hotel. Because I got a confirmation code. And that's the way you got to tell the devil. You got to tell the devil. I got a confirmation. My, my, he was 11, just, uh, 11 once. Just, I got a confirmation code. And I ain't backing down. And I'm going to stand here until you fulfill my order. Confirmation code. But see, the people really trust God, though. And that's the thing I want to get to. See, a lot of people, see, we got our trust in man. This man promised me this. This man promised me that. He, he, you know, sometimes men sign on the line and don't, that paper ain't no good. It, it, it ain't good. As, see, but, but see, can I put my trust in God? Wow. That's what Jesus said. Don't misplace your trust. People will disappoint you. Okay, I need two. Raphael, I need you. You did, you did good the first service. I need you. I don't need another. I need another strong brother that's bigger than me. That's a strong brother. Come on, Raphael. Let him get, give him an idea of what, what a strong brother bigger than me look like. <laughs> All right. Let's see. You think we can use him? Use him. He lost a lot of weight. He kind of narrow now. <laughs> tight, tight. Let me see. Okay, I think we can use you. All right, come on up here. I'm going to illustrate this. Okay. All right, stand over there. Right there. Right there, right there. Now, you ever seen a... Uh, 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 okay. A guy get an injury, a sports injury in football or basketball or something like that. And, uh, and let's say he breaks his leg. And uh, yeah, ooh, uh, and so you know they can't let him just stay on there on the floor on the ground, on 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 the uh, uh, field because they'll they'll trample him. He'll he'll get incapacitated or something. And uh, so so they got to move him off. But he his he can't he can't walk off. He would get up himself and walk off because a man ain't trying to have no other man carrying him. We don't do that. <laughs> For another man to carry you, another man that boy got to be hurting bad. Cause we, I got it. <laughs> That's how we do. Okay. Now, I can't put my, I can't put my weight on my, on my, my leg. Actually, both of them, you know, I, I, both of them gone. I mean, they got hit. They sprained. They hurt. I can't put weight on. So typically, what do they do when they try to move an injured player off the floor? They carry. I carry. Okay, now we gon' we gon' y'all 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 big strong brother, y'all been working out. All right, all right. And and y'all gon' y'all gon' y'all gon' care. okay, we're gonna do this. In the name of Jesus. Okay, okay, now now I, I can't put weight because I'm injured. And so I need some help. But I don't know if I don't know if, I don't know if they can do. I don't know. I think I may need some. Okay, I try. I try. Cause I got to I got to trust these guys. Man. They about to carry me. And I ain't trying nobody, I ain't trying anybody to drop me. All right, all right. And I got to put all my weight on you. I got to put all this, all this uh, weight <laughs> on you. I can't, I, 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 I ain't going to be, I ain't going to be, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I got to put all, all, all this, oh, okay, y'all carry me. Thank you, Jesus. All of them about D -D, baby, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, okay. Now. I just illustrated to you what it looks like to God to trust him. God, I'm putting all my weight on you. If, I don't, if, if, if you don't carry me, I'm going to still be right over there. See, a lot of us want to send God. Y'all walk back. God, go ahead over there. Yeah, Lord, shoot, this is going to be good right here. Because I know, uh, you know, if I, can just, if I can just maneuver this, if I can get uh, 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 Pookie to do this, and if I can get Racine to take care of that, you know, I can, we can get there. We got it all figured out, in other words. But until, don't you put me on YouTube. <laughs> but until, listen, listen, listen. You got a need. Faith says, I'm putting all of my weight on you, God. Thank 
him. I don't know. Up. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. It looked like I'm for up. 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 God, look. God, look at. We made it. Look at it. We made it. Thank y'all, brother. These brothers are strong brothers. See, until, see, faith says, I ain't trusting nobody else. I ain't leaning on nothing else. God, it's, listen, if you can't do it, I don't want to go. If you, if you can't bring it into me, I don't need it. Close. Jesus said, have faith in God. Now, now, don't get me wrong. God will use people, but let him show you who he's using. He got people lined up already. He's already got folks lined up. He always uses people. But I got to trust him because, see, if I pick it out, there may be, God may use somebody I don't think can he, can, that, that, that he can use. Elijah, he sent Elijah down to a widow. I mean, the widow was broke. She was in famine. Now, I'm sure Elijah walked up to her like, I don't think you're the one. But when you're trusting God, the unexpected takes place. And a lot of us say we trust God, but we don't. We trust God as far as we can logically, reasonably figure it out. So Jesus said, have faith in God. Now let me take you to one other place. Hallelujah. You might need to get to first service. Go to 2 Kings chapter 2, please. Glory to God. This is important. Don't leave yet. You want to get this part. I mean, I don't know if you're going to leave, but don't leave. Second Kings chapter 2. Thank you, Father. Mm, mm, mm. I'm so glad I learned about this, man. <laughs> Put all your weight on it. Oh, I didn't even give you my definition. Faith, faith in God is to believe, to fully trust, to be so confident that you base your actions on what you believe. That's why you can go boldly to that hotel counter. You're basing your actions on what you believe based on the confirmation you got. See, a lot of people say they believe God, but their behavior never changes. Real faith causes your behavior and your actions to change. People that worry a lot and people who complain a lot haven't learned how to trust God with their life. And I used to be, I used to worry in high definition, technicolor, man. I used to, I used to worry like I, I, my mother taught me. Until I got saved and I saw what Jesus said, worry is a sin. And so faith says we don't worry. Everything in me is falling apart like a $2 watch. But faith says we don't worry. God got this. He said, I take care of the birds, I take care of the flowers, and I'll take care of you. He said, listen, I'm already into your future. I knew you before you were placed in your mother's womb. I already laid out your life. I'm in your future waiting for you to catch up. I got you. Don't worry. Don't worry. But here's the key. Second Chronicles. No. Second Kings. Thank you all so much. Now, this is a story about Elisha and Elijah. Elisha was an uh, uh, assistant to Elijah, the prophet Elijah. And um, Elijah was getting, getting ready to go. And so um, Elijah wanted a double portion of his anointing. Well, yeah. But um, Elijah started telling him, okay, well, you have to do this. You need to do this. You need to be with me when I leave. Well, I want to read verse, start at verse 14 because Elijah says something that, that just, I think, capsules a lot. Verse 14, then Elijah took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him. Elijah had just taken off in this, uh, in this spiritual helicopter on the way to heaven, the chariot. And he took the mantle that had fallen and struck the water and said, where is, say it with me, the Lord God of Elijah. And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that. And Elijah crossed over. Now, notice what Elisha said. Well, notice what he didn't say. He didn't ask, where is Elijah? He didn't say, oh, my God, what am I going to do now? Elijah's gone. He didn't say that. That would have been misplaced faith. See, a lot of us, we put so much confidence in a person that when they leave, we're like, oh, my God, what am I going to do? Elijah said this. <laughs> he said, where is the 
Where is the the God of Elijah? Elijah knew that the power wasn't in that mantle that he just used. The power wasn't in that chariot that he just saw Elijah go off in. He understood that all of that stuff I saw. He saw Elijah pray in six months it not rain and pray again and he released it. He saw all of that. He saw Elijah get sustained divine provision. The raven and the, and the woman, the widow. He saw Elijah uh, 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 confront the, the, the prophets of Baal and, and stare them down and, and defeat them. He saw Elijah um, he saw Elijah <laughs> overcome that woman chasing him Remember that woman Jezebel? Yeah. He, he was afraid of her. It's amazing how we can be strong in one area and weak in another one. Yeah. Yeah. He, he confronted the prophet, but that woman spooked him. Yeah. <laughs> Women have a way of spooking us. So anyway, so and here he was sitting under the tree. said, man, Lord, I'm just, I'm just ain't no other prophet here. Just, just take me out. But he encouraged himself. He saw all of that. And so Elijah's now thinking, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Elijah's gone, but his God is still here. And so I want to encourage you because, see, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want somebody else's anointing. I want the God of the one who produces the anointing. And so Galatians, I mean, excuse me, so, so Elijah's saying, listen. Listen, I want the God. How many times have you read in the Bible? Um, well, I want the God of Abraham. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They kept saying that because they understood. Listen, God never changes. If he did it for one, he'll do it for another. So I don't, I don't, want, I don't want the same anointing my mama had. I want the God of my mama. I want the God of Abraham. Because he provided for uh, Abraham. I want that same providing God. He provided for Isaac. I want the same providing. He protected Abraham's family. He called Abraham to go win a war he never should have won. That's the God that does the supernatural. I want the God of the woman with the issue of blood. I want the God of, hallelujah, I want the God of Elijah. And we got him. So that's why Jesus is saying, put your faith in the God. Quit looking at spiritual superstars. I want to be like George Meyer. I want to be like T.D. Jake. No, you want the God of T.D. Jake. You want the God of George Meyer. No, you don't want to be like me. You want my God. That's what you want. You want the God. And see, see, that's why Jesus said, put your, put your faith in God. He never changes. And God can take you. In fact, see, people don't know this. A lot of people. Elijah did twice the miracles of Elijah. Elisha did twice the miracles of Elijah. Yes, he did. Be it unto you according to your faith. See, your faith, your faith may stop here, but, but your God can take my faith way up there yeah. if I want to. Yeah. Amen. The God of Abraham. Oh. Abraham had some stuff the Bible said his body couldn't produce. That same promises to me. That's why she had the baby. Took her 10 years, though. But she had him. They started calling us Abraham and Sarah. We was only 30, how old? 38? 35. That ain't old. No, sir. See, we didn't knew middle age now. We didn't knew middle age, babe. Okay. But, but now when I have a need, when I have a need, I'm like, God, look what you did for Abraham. Same God. We just read in Malachi. He said, I never change. That's the way you got to read that Bible. And that's why Satan want us so caught up in philosophy, not understanding that, wait a minute, if he did it for one, he got to do it for me. And I actually have a better covenant than Abraham, so I know God is good. He was good then. He doubly good now. The God of Abraham. So I don't sweat. We don't sweat, do we, y'all? No. We don't sweat a situation. We the God of Abraham. Hallelujah. That woman whose son died and she, was, she stood there and said, all is well. Why? Why could she say that? Because she wasn't looking at the prophet. She was looking at the God of Elijah. What you say? What you say? Good God Almighty. 
That woman that, had, had, that was in debt and they were going to take her kids, she came to the prophet. She knew it wasn't the prophet. She, she, she knew it was the God of the prophet. Yeah. So every time we read those stories, God, you did that. You did that. Look what you did. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of Elijah, my God. The God of Peter and Paul. The God that delivered them out of prison. God did that. And every time you read the Old Testament, it said how God drove out the enemy. Jesus said, if the Father in me, he does the work. I speak it, but God does the work. That's the God that I serve. I'm about to get happy, somebody. God can bring you customers. You don't even have to spend money on advertising. I got a friend down in uh, 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 L.A. area. I forgot what you, he, he sell cars. He's a car salesman. This boy was making like a couple, couple, couple six figures incomes. What does that mean? More than 100000 he's making a couple. Selling cars. I said, well, how you do that? He said, I just call, I just, I just, I, I just release my faith for customers. I said, well, how you do all of that? And you do all of that at your church for free. I did work at the church. And now he's, now he's like, I mean, we, we bought a car from him up here a couple of years ago. Man, he liked me. <laughs> That's all I could say. It was crazy. God gave us faith. I mean, it was brand new, brand new Lexus, brand new, brand new. Ain't nobody drove it. Nobody tiny sat in that thing but hers. And we got it for just crazy money. Well, what, what I'm saying that he would say, Pastor, God said, whatever I desire when I pray, believe I receive it. So I just pray in about, I just pray in about 50 customers a week, whatever the number was. He said, I just, I just, I just pray them in. He said, ain't no stress, strain, or struggle. He said, I got a covenant with God. He said, everybody want to buy my car. Yeah. He said, look at you. Here you are in Alaska buying one. <laughs> he said, I got, I'm, I'm way off y'all. But he said, listen, I got an angel. Go to Hebrew, don't go. But Hebrew 114 talks about we have ministering spirits. Yes. They serve us. Yes. They're like employees. Yes. This is how we've been living for the last 20 something years. They serve us. So I send them out in the name of Jesus, and they hearken. They only obey the word. That's why I got to speak the word of God. I can't speak what I'm feeling. I can't speak what I'm seeing. I got to speak the word because they only, they only obey and act on that word. Right. And so he said, no, I just send them out. I said, you know, he said, L.A. air is big, so I just send, out, I just send about 50 paying customers, not, not, not looky lose, about 50 customers a week. So all y'all that's in business, y'all need customers, I just told you how to get them. But you got to do it with faith in God. I know, man. Can I get you one more? Can I get one more? You know, God is so good. You don't have to be bashful with him. A lot of us kind of bashful with God. Well, I don't want to bother God with that one. Because I just think it's just me. Well, well you, he put the desires in your heart. Anyway, go to number chapter 11. And, and back there on the screen, I want you to put something up there for me. Let me find it. Number chapter 11, I need y'all to go over there. I want to show you something real quick. And we out of here. Man, thank y'all for letting me do this. Thank the Lord. Thank you for doing this. Man, you thought I just heard about this. Good God Almighty. Okay, on the screen, I didn't use this one this morning. I used another one, but this is a good crowd here. The other crowd was good, too. <laughs> no, y'all be going back telling pastors that y'all were bad. <laughs> uh, second, second, second uh, Corinthians chapter 11, verse 31. Put that on the screen for me, please. Y'all are in numbers. Okay, all right. <sighs> hey there, fella. 2 Corinthians 11, 31. Here's what Paul said. The God and Father, watch this, of our Lord, Jesus Christ, who is blessed forever, knows that I ain't lying. 
for it. For that, I ain't lying. But uh, I want you to see, Jesus is saying, have faith in God. So the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, so we got the same God Jesus had. Yeah. And we got the same Father. Because yeah. now this is the New Testament now. They, didn't, they weren't calling him Father in the Old Testament. So Elijah said, I, I want the God, where's the God of Elijah? Well, we can say, where's the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah. That's who I got now. Wow. Hallelujah. That's my God, that's right. My God. What is it that my God won't do? Now, let me show you this real quick, because sometimes we, we, we disqualify ourselves out of the goodness of God. And I hope I'm stretching you, because we got we to gotta, we gotta be spiritually minded. The Bible says in Isaiah 55, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. And so when we start thinking like this, see, something is happening. See, something is happening, unless you, you know, wait a minute. Something is happening inside of you, in your spirit right now. Your spirit knows that this, this, all this is right. Your mind may be like, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But your spirit is like doing cartwheels and flips. Like, this is what I've been waiting on. I've been waiting on somebody to tell me something like this. Because there's no, what does it mean? We're more than conquerors. More than conquerors. What does that mean? What, that means that whatever comes out of us, we can overcome it. We can conquer it. But we got to do it with faith. All right. Well, I set it up. You're supposed to bring it home. When I point to you, y'all supposed to go, faith in God. <laughs> That's what y'all supposed to do. But I'm tired now. I ain't going to do it again. <laughs> okay, number chapter 11. Let me show you this. Because I just want to remove all doubt that God can do anything for you. Now, number chapter 11, the children of Israel were complaining to Moses about what they were eating. And they wanted to change the diet. <laughs> so, uh, beginning with verse, uh, uh, verse 18. He said, then you shall say to the people, consecrate yourself for tomorrow and you shall eat meat. For you have wept in the hearing of the Lord saying, who will give us meat to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore, the Lord will give you meat and you shall eat. You should not eat for one day, nor for two days. You run in your mouth, nor for five days or nor for 10 days. I'm not even, you going to eat for more than 20 days. But you shall eat for a whole month. And I'm going to give you meat all right until it comes out of your nostrils. And become loathsome to you because you have despised. See, you, 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 you had a low estimation of the Lord who is among you. And you have wept before him saying, why did we ever come up out of Egypt? That's the world. And Moses said, the people whom I am among, this is Moses talking to the Lord. Man, these people are like 600,000 men. Now, it just says men because, you know, if you read the story back, it was for God 21 years and older. Um, 21 years older were the people. And so, you know, some of them guys were married. They got married young back then. So they got married, and, you know, they were pretty prolific in uh, producing them babies. So it was probably a couple million people out there on foot. Now Moses is saying, okay, look, there's 600,000 men out here, and all their babies and all their wives, and they can have more than one, too, back then, back then, back then, back then, back then, back then. Back then, they can only have, they can have more than one back then, back then, back then, back then. <laughs> Back then, back then, no spare rib now. No spare rib. This ain't chili, the Applebee's. Ain't no, ain't no baby back ribs. Okay. Um, he said, yet you have said, I will give them meat that they may eat for a whole month. Now, here's Moses questioning God. Now, watch this. Because this is where we get in trouble. Um, verse 22, Moses thinking, how are you going to do this, God? Shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them? Who got to do all of that? That's what Moses thinking. Uh, to provide enough for them? Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together? Who got to go out there fishing? To provide enough for them. Now watch this. And this is what God is talking to you. And then we're going to wrap it up right here. And the Lord said to Moses and to everybody here at Lighthouse, has the Lord's arm been shortened? Moses, do I have arthritis? <laughs> now you shall see whether what I say will happen to you or not. God is saying, listen, what I promise, 
I would not tell you this if I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> he said, my arm is not shortened. My ear is not dull. And this is, the, this is the, the God of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the same God. He said, I'll feed two, three million people for 30 days. Ain't no refrigerator out here. Ain't no smokehouse out here. I will feed them. I will do it. And most said, how are you going to do it? See, we always try to figure it out. It's not my job to figure it out. My job is to believe God's going to do his job. And his job is to confirm his word. Whatever situation, whatever's going on in your life, God's arm is not short. His arm is not short. His arm is not short. That's why he put that stuff in there. I'm the same God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, Joshua. You keep naming them. My arm is not short. God can send you all the way across the, the, the globe and take care of you. When, and you not know anybody over there. Amen. If he sent you, he'll take care of you. If he, if he told you to do it, his provision is there to do it. If, if you're in a situation, he said, I will not allow you to be tempted above what you are able. The saints, we find, sometimes we find ways to get in trouble. But God said, I, if you're in a situation, whatever you're in right now, he said, I've already surveyed the situation and have determined that you can handle it. If you couldn't handle it, he wouldn't let us be in it. And the Bible says he's faithful not to allow us to be tempted above. However hard it is, you got the goods right now to take care of it. His arm is not short. In fact, you know, he doesn't get, he doesn't get old and start atrophying. He, he, he probably, you know, I believe he got a, one of them detector gadget things. You know, just reach way over there, way in the back and pull it out and fix it for us. Amen. Praise God. I want you to have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Let's stand, everybody. Come on, stretch your legs. Hallelujah.